Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Classic and for the first time in a while we're actually starting on the launcher instead of the actual game. And that's because today is going to be a spending spree video that you guys requested during one of the live streams. I asked a bunch of you if you wanted to see me do this and a lot of you said yes, so that's what we're going to be doing today. I've been doing a ton of missions over the past month or so, trying to earn enough to do something like this and we've got ourselves up to 63,866 six gems which should be enough to buy a few guns and then also some clothes or camping supplies or whatever else we might need but I do want to prioritize a couple things because I have been meaning to get some more of the engraved guns we've got a lot of the base guns but we don't necessarily have any of the fancy engraved versions so I think today might be the day that we purchase a couple of them and take them out for a hunt and there's a lot of really beautiful looking rifles the question is like which one do we even buy there's so many that look really awesome I honestly don't even know where to begin but honestly, I think where we're going to start out actually is getting the 300 bolt action rifle in the winter camo. A lot of these winter camo guns look really nice and I've been meaning to pick up a couple of them. So I think first of all, let's just buy that because this is an awesome rifle and the winter version of it looks really, really good. So let's just go ahead and make that purchase right there. We now own a 300 bolt action rifle in the winter camo, which is going to be absolutely amazing to use on maps like White Rhyme Ridge or uh, Hemeldal. And another thing that I've been wanting to get that honestly is not that expensive is the winter camo snake bite. I've been wanting to get this for a little while as well. The snake bite is one of my favorite bows in the entire game, so it's only fitting that we get the other variant of it. The next thing that I think we will buy is the duck collar lanyard. Now, this basically just makes it so you can have all of your duck calls on one hotkey and it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about putting them on your specific uh, item slots. And it just really makes it so it's easier to carry a bunch of different stuff and still have all of your collars accessible. And so we will be buying that. And now we have uh, 36,666 gems left, uh, quite the number to land on, but that means we still have enough to purchase an engraved weapon. And I'm not entirely sure which one I want to do yet, but I'm kind of thinking about doing possibly the 9.3 or maybe the 7x64 because those are both really awesome rifles that are very versatile. But at the same time, this 405 looks really, really nice. I don't know what it is, but this just looks absolutely beautiful. I've, honestly, I think that's a Damascus steel barrel. If that's the case, I kind of want to get this. And after looking at my gems again, I think we actually can purchase two of these. They're about 17,000 gems each, so that'll equal 34,000 between two different rifles. So in fact, I think we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and purchase the 405 lever action engraved. Because this thing is just incredibly gorgeous. And then I think the other thing that we will buy is the 7x64. Because this also just looks absolutely amazing. And honestly, I figured what better map to take a look at these rifles than pick a bean bay because we will be able to use the 405 on stuff like the water buffalo and the bantang. And oh my gosh, this thing looks absolutely beautiful. I gotta say this might be one of my favorite looking engraved rifles in the game and that definitely is a Damascus steel barrel as well that looks really cool cannot wait to get this thing in the light and then we can also shoot the Rusa and the Sambar deer with the 7 by 64 millimeter this is gonna be a pretty awesome hunt I can already tell and we can also shoot stuff like the feral hogs if we end up finding a really good one and I think that since I plan to go through the tunnel to get to the water buffalo in the Bantang, I think it's only fitting that we take out this feral hog first. So I let out a call. We're going to just wait for it to come over here and then take it out with the 7x64 engraved. Well, that's the sound of a Bantang, which means we at least have that close if we can't get this uh, hog here. And honestly, I think the hog might have spooked. I haven't heard or seen any signs of it yet. So we might just have to go after that Bantang instead. Oh, there it is. There he is. It honestly doesn't look like too bad of a pig either. Actually, now that I look at it again, it's not that crazy. I'm not even sure how that shot did. I think that should have been fine. 
Ah, it looks like it's an intestines shot, which, uh, honestly does not surprise me. The, uh, feral hogs are kind of weird with their hitboxes sometimes, so really not surprised that that did not get vitals, but he really didn't run far, so it's not that big of a deal. We did get just the liver. 669 scoring, so it's actually a pretty small one. Uh, but I guess we were just a little bit too far back. Liver is technically still a vital. I mean, in the Hunter Call of the Wild it is at least. I'm not sure if it's really considered that in Classic. I guess clearly it's not since we didn't get vital blood, but at least it took it down relatively quick. Oh. Well, there's a water buffalo. I honestly did not even realize that there was one that close to me. I started walking in the opposite direction. I just fast traveled uh, through this tunnel and... I guess she was just right there. There was a banting that called from kind of over in that direction. I did have her marked, but I just realized that I unmarked her by marking that one. But I guess we will go for this water buffalo instead. And we're finally in kind of like a sunny area so we can see this a little bit better. And it really is a beautiful looking gun. It's absolutely beautiful. And so is this one. They both look absolutely amazing. It's uh, getting a little bit more of a lighted area. Yeah, that looks good. I really like the way both of these look. Super awesome rifles. Uh, but honestly, I think we could probably hit this thing from here. Yeah, that should have been a decent shot at least. Probably just a single lung if anything. Uh-oh. Uh, this could be bad. Oh my gosh, I did not even see this thing. That scared me a little bit. I did not expect to be having to take a water buffalo that was charging. Uh, but anyway, we weren't able to get that first one that I hit because we hit way too far back and ended up just getting intestines. Uh, but thankfully, this shot went a little bit better and got double lung. 116.38, just a female though. You know, oddly enough, this has been one of those hunts where I've barely seen anything. We saw those two water buffalo, both were females, but I haven't seen anything since. There's been a lot of tracks along pretty much everywhere, but just none in sight. It's been quite a strange hunt. I can't say I've had a hunt this empty in quite a long time. There we go. We finally got a call from a water buffalo. It is about time. We've been roaming for so long without hearing or seeing anything. It's uh, nice that we finally at least have a sign of life. Oh, there it is. There's our water buffalo. Let's go ahead and get a shot into it. And that will uh, do the trick right there. I absolutely love this rifle for water buffalo. It's so powerful and it drops them on the spot almost every single time. An absolute powerhouse of a rifle. And this isn't exactly that big of a water buffalo, but at least we finally found a water buffalo and a male at that. So this one's going to score 197, which is uh, nowhere near being huge. These score clear up into like the 280s, I believe. 270s, 280s, somewhere in that range. So they do get much bigger than this, but it's nice to see the 405 finally finding a target. But I think it's time that we move on to something else, and I think what that's going to be is some Rusa deer. However, before we actually hunt for some Rusa deer, I think it's only appropriate that I show something cool that we ended up finding when I was trying to grind for the gems to do this video because it did take a lot of grinding and when I was doing a little bit of hunting earlier to get the last few thousand gems that I needed to be able to make this video, we came across something really cool and I think without further ado, let's just go ahead and show that now. Well, I just stumbled across something pretty awesome as I'm out here doing the whitetail missions trying to get enough gems to do a spending spree video because I asked you guys a little while ago during a live stream if you'd like to see it and a lot of you wanted to see a spending spree type video where I basically just spend all of my gems on a bunch of stuff that we don't have like some of the engraved weapons, but I managed to come across this guy right here. And that's actually a really good looking non-typical. That's probably one of the nicest ones I've seen in a while. Unfortunately, he did spook off. I'm not sure when, but because of that, he's not going to come to a call most likely. But I mean, just in case, we'll go ahead and give a few calls and see if maybe he's interested. But I don't think he will be. There he is right there. And that's actually a really good looking rack. This might be one of the coolest non-tips I've seen in a very long time. 
let's uh, try to get him down. Let's uh, hopefully get him down with a good vital hit. And yep, that will do it. That is going to be such a cool addition to one of our trophy lodges. I just heard another buck grunt as well, and I have no clue where it was. Uh, let's hope it wasn't anything too crazy. I don't think that it was, but I mean, just in case, we'll probably go check later. But I'm just happy we got this thing down. This is a beautiful non-typical. And it's quite a crazy one as well. I mean, one of the antlers kind of goes down and the other one goes up. That is just awesome looking. That is such a cool looking non-tip. I'm really happy with this. It's probably going to be like low to mid 200s, but this is still an amazing non-typical. And it is a 224.7638. That is an awesome trophy. Definitely one of the nicest looking non-tips I've killed in a long time. I think the last good non-tip we've killed for Whitetail was probably close to a year ago. It was a really good looking, I believe, 260s or 270s Whitetail. Uh, this is definitely the best one I've killed since then, though. And honestly, that's a pretty decent trophy shot right there. I think I really like the way that shows off the rack. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and keep it like this. Uh, I'm really liking the way that looks. Now, let's see if there's any filters that look good with it. Um, eh, probably not. We'll just go with no filter for this one. And then definitely taxidermize that guy. That is such an awesome looking deer. One of the coolest non-tips we've killed in so long. I honestly could not be happier with that. Well, we finally got the call from a male Rusa deer, and it's honestly not that far away, so this will be a perfect thing to take out with the 7x64 engraved. Ooh, there we go. There it is. Let's uh, get down real quickly and just get lined up on him. It is a pretty small one, but still a uh, good thing to take out with this rifle. What? Wait, wait, what? What just happened? Did we hit one of these trees? Do they have like an abnormally large hitbox? Or did it just not die? I'm kind of blown away at what just happened. That was very strange to say the least. I guess we'll find out very shortly if we actually did hit it. I don't think we did though. That was really weird. Yeah, definitely did not get a hit. I'm not entirely sure what just happened. Um, if I'm able to see what happened while editing, I guess I'll put some like text up or something as to what I think went on there, but honestly, I have no clue. That was really weird. Well, after uh, what happened there with the Rusa deer, I decided to jump over to Logger's Point because of what happened. I really don't understand what went on and everything in the area spooked off after that. So to give us a much better chance at finding some stuff to actually shoot with this gun, I decided to come over here to Logger's Point and go up to Middle Tower. And I also decided to equip the uh, Winter Snake Bites since we also purchased this and haven't got a chance to use it. I will probably do a full video on the winter camo guns very soon, so let me know down in the comments if you guys are interested in that, because I definitely would be down with doing a video on them. I think that could be a lot of fun. But for now, we're just going to use the uh, Snakebite Winter and the 7x64 engraved and uh, try to take out a few whitetail deer and maybe some feral hogs as well. All right, let's go ahead and take out this doe with our brand new winter snake bite. I'm excited to use this thing finally. It is quite a good looking bow. I think it looks better than the other snake bite. And I'm honestly kind of disappointed in myself for not purchasing it sooner. It is a really good looking bow. We've got a couple more white tailed does coming in. So let's go ahead and try to take these out with the bow as well. Uh, this one's not entirely sure where it wants to go, it seems, but Hopefully it will uh, make up its mind shortly, so we can go ahead and do this. And then, as far as this one over here, I'm thinking we can probably take the shot now. Uh, next time she stops, we'll be able to take her down. And just like that, she has stopped and we are ready to take our shot. Now, we just gotta hopefully find a buck, but so far it's just been does, which uh, really doesn't surprise me. Well, once again, it appears that we have a doe. That's a little bit unfortunate, but then again, it wouldn't be a scarecrow video if we actually found bucks. 
But let's go ahead and take a shot on her. Ooh, she decided to move right as I was about to shoot. That could have ended poorly. All right, now we should be able to take her out once she stops, which uh, should not be too uh, far away, I would imagine. And if, of course, she'd go underneath. <laughs> Typical doe. There we go. Now we can finally get a shot into her. And perfect. Now we just gotta right. wait for some bucks, hopefully. And I mean, since it's right here and it doesn't appear to be that big of one, we might as well take out this little pheasant as well. And just like that, the little pheasant is down. There's actually quite a few pheasants around me. If I was pheasant hunting today, this would be a great spawn to get because they are just all over this area there's at least another five roosters so i think with no bucks showing up we're probably just gonna head towards the direction where we ended up finding that non-typical which was kind of like over in this area so we're gonna start heading in that direction and by then we should end up finding a few bucks at least so uh, i guess whenever we do find something we will uh, just cut to that oh there we go I think that is a buck, and it is. That is a beautiful deer, actually. 135 to 175. Let's go for a long range shot with this thing if we can see it. Oh yeah, right here. Should be able to squeeze in there. In fact, that's him right there. And that looked to be a solid hit. That guy is gonna go down. That is an awesome looking white tailed deer. To go with the other awesome looking white tailed deer that we showed off a little bit ago in this video, that is a pretty awesome thing to find. I'm happy with that. So I'm not entirely sure how, but we managed to get a body shot instead of any vitals at all. I don't even know where we would have hit this guy. I couldn't even begin to imagine, and in fact, I don't even see a bullet wound. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I guess we'll have to kind of pick this guy up and move him around a little bit and see if we can figure out where it is because as of now, I don't see any bullet hole at all. And this guy ended up scoring 157. That's actually a pretty low score for this rack. If this guy is a 7x7 or an 8x8 like I think it is, that's actually a pretty low score. And yeah, I don't even see where we would have hit him. That's uh, very odd. Very odd to say the least. Uh, and this guy is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it is a 7x7. Seven seven. Uh, still a decent buck though. Well, I'm not going to spend too much time on a crazy trophy shot for this guy since he's not nearly as big as I thought he would be. So uh, we're just going to go with uh, this right here. I think that looks decent enough. But it's still a pretty good deer. Definitely not too shabby. Ooh, before this thing runs off, let's... uh. Just real quickly put a shot into it since it's just going to stand there. And I think that's actually the first drop shot we've made with the 7x64 because my shooting has been a little bit subpar today. But as I was saying, of all things to actually get a drop shot on, we managed to get one on a feral hog. And uh, typically these things are known to have really messed up hitboxes that sometimes just don't register as what you would expect them to. There's been many times where I should have got a perfect lung shot and ended up getting liver instead or even intestines. It seems to happen quite often with these things. So I decided to put our brand new non-typical in our main lodge because I do think it's my favorite of all the non-tips that we've got since Trophy Lodges released uh, quite a while back. I do think this is the coolest looking buck that I've killed and one of the biggest things that stands out to me is how this left antler on here, well I guess it's right on the screen, but his left antler has like a triple brow tine that is incredibly long and I think that's so cool. If both sides looked like that, this would be the coolest buck in the world, but unfortunately it doesn't have uh, doubles, but it's still very, very awesome looking, and I do think it looks a little bit better than this one right here, which scores 261, so even though this one scores more, I'm much more fond of the rack of this guy, and I ended up moving our 200 whitetail up there, so I think it's gonna fit a little bit better in that spot. And then we ended up moving our blacktail to up here, this is our highest scoring blacktail that we've ever killed, and I ended up taking the axis deer down, and we'll put it in one of the backup lodges, but I'm really liking the way this is turning out. 
I think all we really need to do is improve on the Blacktail, get one that's a little bit higher scoring, and then also get a higher scoring Mule Deer. I think we're pretty much set when it comes to the white tail and then also our non-typical black tail and our non-typical muley. I think they are probably going to be permanent additions, but we definitely need to improve upon this uh, typical mule deer and the typical black tail. And then probably uh, a couple of these red deer as well because both of those are just high 260s and this guy is a 274, so he definitely outshines both of them. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed. It's been quite a bit of fun trying out all these new weapons that we ended up buying. And I think next we'll do a video with the winter weapons on White Rhyme. So let me know down below if you guys want to see that. But until next time, if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and ring that notification bell so you guys will never miss a video. Also, be sure to comment down below with what you guys would like to see me do next here in the Hunter Classic, and I'll try to respond to as many of them as I can. With that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace!